Okay, so welcome to our special board meeting, Board of Supervisors, January 13th. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. And um, for our moment of silence, I'm just heartbroken at the number of deaths around our state and our country from the climate related incidences and particularly that little five year old boy that was swept away from his parents in Southern California. So for our moment of silence, let's just think about all those individuals and families who are suffering during this time. Vice Chair Simon, do you want to lead us in the play? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And... We need to, do we need to consider an additional item? I didn't get to talk to you about that. No? Oh, it is? Oh, it is. 4.2. Oh, I need to refresh my agenda. <laughs> okay, so um, we will move on to 4.1. Our 1 p.m. item continued from January 10th, sitting as the Lake County Housing Commission, presentation describing the finance, financing and funding sources and relative positions of the lien holders for the Colliers Avenue Affordable Housing Project and B, consideration of the PLHA loan agreement, PLHA deed of trust, PLHA promissory note, PLHA regulatory agreement, MHSA and HHAP loan agreement, MSHA HAAP deed of trust, MHSA HHAP promissory note, Chase and County subordination agreement, County sponsor subordination agreement, County DDS subordination agreement for the Colliers Avenue housing project, and termination and release of agreement to develop affordable housing. Okay. Um, yeah, so I really appreciate you coming um, in person and continuing this conversation and contributing to the, um, the roadmap that we had asked for. So I will turn it over now to uh, Lake County Behavioral Health. Yeah, thank you, Chair and uh, members of the board. April Camber, Lake County Behavioral Health Deputy Director. I will be uh, filling in for Todd Metcalf, um, our director, in his absence. Um, and I'm really just going to pass the baton over to Elise Jones, our other deputy director, uh, for a presentation. Thank you so much, board, for presenting this as a special item today. Um, I think it truly shows the dedication this board has to this project and to housing in our community, which is a critical resource. Um, my opening comments to this agenda item before we move into any discussion specifically regarding the myriad documents that you referenced, which were a mouthful, quite impressive, is that there is inherent risk in any construction project. And I think anything that is a large project or a large doing or a large change, there is some risk. And obviously, we need to be very cautious and considerate of that risk um, and make an informed decision. Um, and I count on your board and the Housing Commission today to weigh the risks with the associated gain that would be brought to our community through this housing project. Um, there has been posted to this item a presentation, and it is 
quite dense, <laughs> um, but it does uh, provide a nice capsule of information and outlines all of the various funding sources that contribute to both the construction of the project and the permanent uh, sustainable funding for that project through um, myriad blended and braided funding sources, uh, which are flowing through County Behavioral Health as the lead administrative entity for the Lake County Continuum of Care. So I would rather not read off of a slideshow and I don't know that I would do justice to the materials aside from doing it any other way. But if it is amenable to your board and you'd like me to uh, share my screen and walk through that presentation that's been provided, I'm happy to do so. I think it's a good idea to go through it and then we can, um, if Absolutely. anyone has questions as we go through that, we can just um, bring those up as we go along. You got it. Hold on, let me get into presentation mode. I'm not showing it in, um, it's presentation mode on my computer, but it's still not. Let me, you know what I did? Hold on. Zoom's so finicky. I get to get in presentation mode prior to that. Bear with me. Okay. So I think this is as good as it gets. Is that? Everybody's That's fine. got it? Okay. Mm -hmm. right. So the Collier Avenue housing project. Um, it's an affordable housing development. And there have been several such projects in this county. Um, the one that we're most familiar with as a behavioral health agency is, of course, the Bevins Court Apartments, which we also partnered with our CHDC um, on that project. And the project continues today, um, successfully, I would add. Um, it's financed through leveraging of low-income tax credits. Um, and if there are any questions about those, I will be very transparent. I'm not the person to answer them. I'm not a financing expert. I know you're all aware of that. So I would happily defer to any questions regarding how those low-income tax payment credits are structured to RCHDC, who is, I believe, a panelist on today's meeting. Um, they're more than willing to answer specific questions about that. Um, there is a construction loan through Chase Bank. Um, and our CHDC has partnered with Chase Bank on many such construction projects historically. Um, of course, Lake County Housing Commission, uh, the Department of Developmental Services, or Redwood Coast Regional Center, is a contributing partner in this project. Um, Tri-Counties Bank and the California Department of Housing and Community Development through the No Place Like Home program. So low-income housing tax credits are the predominant form of financing for affordable housing in the United States. So again, it's a commonly used uh, method of financing these projects. And our CHDC, as I have stated, is very familiar with leveraging those tax credits to build affordable housing projects. Um, to maximize the benefits of those credits, the project will be owned by a limited partnership, which is Collier Avenue Associates. All right. So it's not advancing my slides. I guess I'll just. There you go. Did it work? Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. So the borrower, um, as was stated in the previous slide, is through this limited partnership of Collier Avenue Associates. So they're actually the borrower of these dollars. And so they are leveraging federal low income housing tax credits in the amount of about 16,000, almost, or excuse me, 16 million, almost $17 million. Um, so this is, you know, as you would imagine, an expensive project. Um, and they have 99.99% ownership in that project. Um, there is a 15 million about dollar comp capital contribution from that limited partnership to the borrower. And on the flip side, the general partner, um, which is also Collier Avenue Associates, has that point, that remainder of that partnership. Um, 
The sole member and manager is the Rural Communities Housing Development Corporation, who we refer to as our CHDC, uh, who is a California non-profit non -profit public benefit corporation. And they also have 100% uh, ownership of the project there, the project sponsor, developer, and also the property manager. So we've been working with them in perpetuity since the initiation of the Bevins Court project. They continue to manage that uh, housing project. Okay, so as I had stated previously, J.P. Morgan Chase uh, is providing a construction loan in the amount of about $14 million, almost $17 million, and that is to be repaid with limited partner capital contributions, and that is a recourse loan. And obviously there's some focus here and concern around the difference between a recourse and non-recourse loan, um, which happy to answer, well, not personally, but happy to field any questions to the appropriate uh, representatives here. Um, Lake County Housing Commission has a contribution of MHSA and HHAP funds uh, to the tune of about 1.4 million. And those funds um, are for the public construction and permanent, and that's rolled into a non-recourse loan. Then the Lake County Housing Commission also has the permanent local housing allocation funds of about $600,000, um, and that is also wrapped up into a non-recourse loan. The Department of Developmental Services, RCRC, they have about $550,000 um, wrapped into this, and that is tied into, again, a non-recourse loan. Uh, Tri-Counties Bank, um, the Affordable Housing Program, uh, has a contribution of $585,000, also with a non-recourse loan. Those funds are granted directly to RCHDC, which then loans amount to the borrower. So any questions about that? That's probably one of the most important slides in the presentation. Any questions? The, uh, yeah. the boxes on the right, those are the deliverables that we're actually going to be asked to approve here today, right? That's correct, Supervisor Green. So I'm counting one, seven total documents. That sounds correct. Okay. There's a slew of them. Okay. So then there's permanent financing. So at the conversion to permanent financing, the J.B. Morgan uh, Chase construction loan will be paid off. And uh, HCD, or the California Department of Housing Community Development, has awarded the project funds from the No Place Like Home program uh, of about $7 million. So there's a competitive allocation of about $6.4 million, comprised of $2.8 million for capital improvements and about $3.5 million for capital operative sub subsidy reserve funds. There's also a non-competitive allocation of about $500,000 for capital improvements. HCD will also record the deeds of trust and regulatory agreements, restricting the use of the property in connection with its permanent financing. So this project cannot be used for anything other than low income and permanent supportive housing. So we have a nice little development timeline. And of course, a key factor here is that if we fail to close on this by March 27th, this will result in a rescission of those tax credits. And obviously the tax credits are the primary source of funding for this. Um, after, well, contingent upon approval of these documents, the PLHA loan documents will be sent to, the, to HCD. And HCD takes quite a while. They take usually about 60 days to do their review and processing. And so that's the timeline that we're up against, is providing HCD enough time to do what they need to do so that we can bring that to fruition by March 27th. So that's the, the gist and the takeaway of that slide. Any questions about this development timeline, of course? You can see that date, uh, the blue line, the tax credit closing there um, at the end of March, and then the construction is then anticipated also to hopefully start in March or beginning of April and continue on through midsummer. Um, and then the leasing process is anticipated to get begin in August where we're filling up those units. All right, so a big concern here, and rightly so, is monitoring of the project. Again, um, the inherent risk in any construction project is something that we can closely monitor. Um, and our uh, CAO's office has generously offered to support the monitoring of that project and the fiscal oversight to make sure that everything happens as it should so that we're able to break ground. Um, and that's the, that's, the end, that's the end game that we're running towards. 
Um, the project funders do impose rigorous standards for underwriting the deal and developing the project, um, and they require the borrower to satisfy certain standards for expenditures, building construction, housing condition, and occupancy of the unit. So there's a lot of regula regulations built into this project that comes also from the funding sources that have to be met. Uh, the two main state agencies that are going to monitor this this project are the California Tax Credit Allocation Committee. Obviously, they have quite a lot of money tied up in this, so they want to make sure that those dollars are spent appropriately and that the project proceeds as designed. And of course, HCD. Um, so that tax credit committee uh, has conducted a highly competitive application process before awarding these tax credits to RCHTC for the project. Um, and that's that's part of this process. So they impose certain cost limitations that ensure high quality shovel ready projects with long term financial viability. So that's again part of their review, that 60 day review, make sure that the project is in good standing to receive those tax credits and that award of public funds essentially. Um, so HCD will record each regulatory agreement on the property to ensure it is used for affordable housing and in compliance with income restrictions, maintenance and reporting obligations. So there's also another entity here uh, that plays a role in monitoring the project and risk management. So Merit Community Capital is the tax credit investor in the project and the limited partner of the borrower. Merit um, has been doing this for a long time and will work closely with RCHDC to monitor the project through construction, conversion to permanent financing, lease up and property management operations. Uh, Chase Bank, the construction lender, uh, has partnered with RCHDC on, again, numerous affordable projects. And likewise, the bank has strict underwriting standards to ensure it is lending responsibly, right? They're not going to invest in a project that isn't viable. So, um, just a little slide about RCHDC, uh, attesting to their experience with these projects. Um, shut my email off here. Uh, and the most recent... Of course, he wants to do this to me. Uh, the most recent things have happened in Wairika. There's also a unit that was recently opened up in Ukiah, um, a few of them. So they've been pretty busy, and um, it is certainly a significant opportunity for Lake County to um, leverage that expertise for the creation of low-income housing. So this is, um, again, that high-level overview detailing all of the financing. Um, and probably uh, one of, again, the most useful slides in the presentation. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything more to add? No? Okay. All right. Questions from the board? Probably Do you not. have a question, yeah, Supervisor Reed? Pro probably not for you, but maybe Stephen or somebody. So the, 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 the context here... I'm not an expert either, but the, the, the tax credits are being talked about in how this deal is structured as if it was actual cash money, and, and maybe I'm confused on that. To me, a tax credit is something you get credit for at the end of the day when you file your taxes. It's money that a particular uh, a business or builder may not end up paying somewhere down the road, but in, in the context that this is structured, I'm, I'm reading it differently. So are tax credits like real money that are being doled out that, uh, no, I'm seeing no. Okay. Oh, I have to. I, I don't see an answer in there, but okay. So it's, it's tax credits are an important part of this project. Tax credits uh, are kind of forcing the sense of urgency on this because the, the window closes at the end of March. Yes, yeah, so I'm getting a, a message from our CHDC that yes, the cash and its equity. And I'm not sure if the CAO is, he, Stephen is shaking his head. That makes sense to him. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. I would allow our CHDC to answer that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is equity. It's not actually cash in hand. It's equity and equity in a project. Doesn't make any sense. Okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't need to. I'm sorry. It's just it, it's it's obviously a big part of the financial mix here, but it's not real money, so I don't get it. As long as the contracts all make sense and it makes sense to the people executing the contracts, 
Uh, Chair Pesher, I do see that there is a hand up in the Zoom room, and I think that this is uh, William. He's an attorney for our CHTC. He may be able to speak more eloquently to that. Um, yeah, Johanna, is that William right there? Okay, wonderful. Yes, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just, to, just to try to answer that question for everyone, the credits themselves are not cash. You're right. What The cash is coming from our investor limited partner who is essentially buying those credits via their interest in the partnership. So they enter the partnership, they commit to making capital contributions in whatever that number was, the $15 million. And in exchange for that, they get a 99% interest in the partnership, including 99% interest in those tax credits we will get over 10 years. So that the, the, the connection is the, the credits generate cash um, and that the investor is putting their cash into the partnership in exchange for those credits. RCHDC is a tax exempt entity can't really do anything with a tax credit itself. So we are in essence selling those credits to this investor. And uh, to follow up on that, the, it's the provision of those tax credits to the investor that basically makes this whole thing pencil out. Without those tax credits, this is a non-starter. So Correct. Right. If we don't have the credits, the investor is never going to give us the money that they want to invest in this project. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Supervisor Sabatier? Thank you, and I'm glad we're having a day two on this. Uh, I know that there was a sense of urgency. Uh, glad we were able to make the meeting happen today so that we can at least not have to wait till the 24th. A um, couple of uh, questions. Uh, we talked about a delegation. It was mentioned the CAO's office, and, and I'm going to be honest, I don't think that's enough. Uh, I'd love to see somebody from the uh, Behavioral Health Department involved in that delegation. Uh, there's grants that have been received from the state. I want to make sure we're following those grants. We're reporting on those grants because just because we gave away the funds doesn't mean that we can uh, clean our hands of them. We still have reporting requirements. Uh, and if the project does go awry, we need to make sure that we're ahead in the way that we're communicating to the state or better understanding how to minimize the risk if something does occur. Because uh, I'd hate to, uh, on a non-recourse loan of $2 million, which which is approximately what we're talking about here today uh, for this development that it goes awry and all of a sudden we find ourselves without any of those funds and owing the state $2 million. So this is more than the potential loss of a property or the potential uh, owing of funds to those who uh, are owed a loan ahead of us. It's also the $2 million that the state has provided us uh, that we need to make sure that we do correctly. So I'd like it to be a delegation and not just a delegated uh, one person. Um, love to put the idea out there that one of the uh, folks from the Board of Supervisors also should be there. I'm wondering if the chair who has some real estate uh, understanding could be involved in that. Uh, but that's um, up to the chair. Uh, I don't know what your capacity is to be involved. I don't think it's going to require a, a daily meeting or even a weekly meeting. Uh, but at the very least, we're looking at maybe a monthly meeting or something like that. Uh, that's, that's up for um, discussion. Um, I also, there's, um, there were some mutual agreements within the agreement that we made uh, in September of 2021, and I'm going to read some of that, and because there's uh, potentially today, I don't know, we didn't talk about it, uh, nobody's uh, bringing it up, so I'll bring it up. There's a termination agreement in front of us as well that's been added onto the agenda since last night. Um, I'm concerned about terminating our September 28, 2021 agreement with RCHDC until everything has been finalized, because while we might finalize things today, there still needs to be some finalized uh, documents with other uh, partners and agencies. Um, and from what I understand, it may be uh, we're, we're looking possibly at a closing in March. There may be some postponements that maybe that that closing may be later. I think that would be the more appropriate time to look at that termination. Um, but in the original agreement that we had, uh, there were some responsibilities that were split between our CHDC and the county. And uh, while I understand that maybe 
seven may not be appropriate to move on over into our current agreements uh, because the idea of us requesting the property back in the midst of a construction, um, obviously that, that would create a, a very difficult legal situation. So I think that once construction starts, I think we're in a much more comfortable place. Um, but in 2.2.8, I'll just read it, it's a long paragraph, but uh, if you could just humor me. Uh, provided that RCHDC has secured the necessary funding for the project, which has not yet occurred entirely, RCHDC agrees to use good faith, commercially reasonable efforts to complete construction of the project and obtain a certificate of occupancy for the project on or before five years. We added that, we amended that agreement to ensure that it said within five years. After the effects of effective date, RCHDC shall use good faith, commercially reasonable efforts to develop the project to serve low-income or very low-income households, meeting the definition of mental disorder, substance use disorder, or at risk of homelessness, provided, however, the parties agree and acknowledge that the targeted population of the project, if any, shall be determined by the finance sources secured by RCHDC and that the project may be required to be made available to any very low-income or low-income households without regard to any disability or existing housing status. Failure to meet the obligation of this provision shall be a material breach and default of this agreement. I'd like to take that paragraph if possible and have a discussion I still would like a timeline I mean I know you've provided a timeline but we've been on this property for I don't know how long hence why we put a five-year timeline in the first place I'd like to see if in a discussion what's possible to taking that paragraph and implementing it in the agreement that we have today uh, obviously we're moving away from RCHDC and now we're going to call your apartment uh, partners or whatever the uh, name is that we're uh, going with um, and I just wanted to make it more robust. Um, but again, there's also a stipulation here on uh, termination. And let me see if I could find it real quick. Uh, what was it? Which document are you on? I'm looking at the September 28th, 2021 agreement that we made with um, RCHDC. And they brought up, if you uh, look at the termination, um, uh, it's under general terms, section three. This agreement will commence as of the effective date and shall terminate upon the earliest of any of the following. And one is 2026, because we had a five-year timeline. Uh, two, the closing of the financing for development of the project, which we're getting close to. Uh, three, the delivery of the quick claim deed, or four, upon mutual agreement of the parties. Uh, I just want to make sure that we come back to review the status of the project before the termination. I don't know if that's requiring a mutual agreement of the parties. Obviously, we need to terminate the previous agreement in order to move forward. Uh, I don't want it to um, uh, prohibit the project at that point, but it's more of a let's get back together, let's find out is all the financing correct, are we still all good to move forward, and that would kind of be a presentation by the delegation uh, for just that final statement. I, I, right now, the way that I read it, the closing of the financing for development of the project can occur at any time if we sign all these documents today, and at that point we would terminate this agreement without maybe us knowing that Everything has been finalized last week, by the way, it's terminated. Uh, I would like to go back and have a final review from the delegation, um, maybe even a better plan on how they want to continue to assess the project as it keeps going to ensure that everything's going correctly, uh, but also to basically understand that, okay, we, we have met everything that we need in order to move forward we're gonna go ahead and terminate the agreement. So I, I would prefer not signing any termination of agreements today, and I think I made all my comments. Um, sure. Oh, go ahead. If, if I could respond, because I've had conversation and email from uh, yesterday uh, with uh, William from Goldfarb Farb Lipman on this very issue. Yes. All right, he said that uh, termination is not being signed now. It will be signed in March. I'm reading from his email to me from yesterday. And the county can instruct the title company that will handle the closing documents that the termination agreement is only recorded after the county deed of trust and regulatory agreement records. Um, the construction lender's title insurance policy cannot show the agreement is still on title ahead of the lender's deed of trust. So the termination will need to be recorded at the March construction loan meeting. So it's not uh, 
There's not a request that it be signed now. It will obviously have to be signed very timely at the time when you're when actually this is closing, all the construction loan closing in March. Um, what your board may want to do at least today is to approve the termination agreement in, uh, subject to final approval by either this delegation, uh, Supervisor Sabatier is suggesting, or by the CAO, uh, as soon as all of the documents are prepared and ready for that closing. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Did you have something to add? I do. Thank you, Council, for clarifying that point, which I certainly would not have been able to do. Uh, so to your first point, though, Supervisor Spatier, about oversight, um, absolutely you're correct. And so, yes, Behavioral Health does have grants, and we are responsible to monitor those and will continue to do those as we, as we have all along um, and continue to get better at doing it. Our partnership with the CAO's office is where to be very transparent, the scope of our expertise ends. Um, because while we are familiar with these grant sources and we do a lot of work with the Lake County Continuum of Care on various housing grants, we are um, not experts in various areas uh, that this touches. And so it's a collaborative effort to make sure that we appropriately uh, monitor risk from, from all angles. So, a delegation sounds like an ad hoc committee to me. And it sounds like it might be appropriate to have this ad hoc committee with behavioral health, admin office, the board, and also COC. Is that necessary or not? I, I don't know that this is specific to COC at this moment in time. No. Okay. No, it's just the county of like behavioral health who's the Okay, so it's just the three. Mm -hmm. some, some of the funds go do pass through us. Some of them are directly to RSCHDC. Regardless, okay. we're still obligated to monitor. Okay. CAO Parker? Yes, thank you, Chair. I'd also like to add that we've already reached out to the grant contract consultant that we retained and have added this project to that review process and monitoring. Excellent. Okay. At no additional cost. <laughs> Even better. Okay, are there any more comments or concerns from the board or from the commission? Okay, I will open it up for public input. Is there anyone in the board chambers or in the Zoom room that has input on this item? Anybody in Zoom? I do not see anybody in Zoom. Okay, so, oh, did you have something? No, I was just talking. Oh, <laughs> for when it's time. Okay, so um, bringing it back to the board at a later date to create an ad hoc committee, is, that the, that's, is there consensus for that? Or is it possible to do that? Can today? we do it? Today, or do we have to agendize it? Well, you're not if you're not actually creating a Brown Act compliant agreement. You're just agreeing to an association of persons for oversight. Isn't okay. that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's better, uh, and you can do that today. An association um, of persons. Well, association of of just the creation of a delegation of county employees and two board members to over for oversight. The. Um, as far as the action that your board will take, I think that um, today you're being asked to approve all of the documents that are attached here and listed separately on the agenda. The only one I believe that you're uh, approving but conditioned upon the actual, the fruition of the closing would be the termination and release of agreement to develop affordable housing. So you've seen it, you've reviewed it, you'll move forward with it. The only condition is that the closing is actually occurring and um, you want to do that in such a way that you don't get in the way of the process itself. In other words, you'll have to be prepared to do that at the time of closing or just before. Okay. So. Is it consensus to form the delegation then in motions to move forward with the documents? I'm happy to be on that association. Obviously, I think you do. 
Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, like you just volunteered me. I think so. <laughs> I did volunteer you, so it comes right back. Okay. So um, now I guess it's time to entertain motions, separate motions for each document. I think that you can list, I'm looking to see, I see A and B, but it seems to kind of, I'm not sure I see. Um, I think it's all in B. Yeah, it's all in B. In the meantime, though, uh, Supervisor Spatier, you have a question? Uh, it's, it's a comment slash question. This has been very messy. I, I, I'm going to put it this way. Um, it's messy because it went through the process of redevelopment. That got messy because we got money pulled from us from the state. Uh, we couldn't complete certain things. Obviously, 2008 happened as well, where everything just kind of shut everything, many projects down. Um, but this is one of those situations where I hope that we can learn something from this so that when we do have another potential project, whether it's similar to this or, or different, that we can get the full picture from the very beginning rather than piecemealing. We have an MOU that's separate from the cleanup that we did, which is separate from the agreements that we have in front of us. And some of the prior agreements don't really give us much wiggle room as to the decisions that can be made today. Um, it's somewhat already been agreed upon, and we've been leading our CHDC on our path, which would just be rude to suddenly stop. If not, I, I'm not even sure if legally we can uh, uh, put a stop. But I, I, the process has been difficult to track, and that's from my perspective. Uh, from the public's perspective, this can't even be possible to even understand how we got here in the first place or what happened in the past. So I hope that we use this as a learning moment. Um, I'm glad that we're doing the delegation. I think we need to try to minimize our risk and protect ourselves as much as possible. Um, and even though I, I, I am not a greatest fan, I don't think that I have a choice and that today I will be uh, moving forward to approve this. Great. Do you have your pen out? I can't. Make a oh, okay. okay. Just, can you grab your pen? Yes. Oh, no, I was just going to oh. offer to assist with the motions, but if Supervisor Green's ready to go, I will sit here quietly. Okay. I just wanted one more thing. Uh, sure. Just, uh, Oops. Sorry. Um, I, you know, it's, uh, I'm hoping that, you know, it's, it's, we're so far in the game now that I don't want to complicate this, this, uh, this request. But uh, once we get a little further in any other project of such, uh, you know how big this project is. I'd like to see if we can. Nice is in the western region, Tau Hall. You know, so it would, like, it, it would be ideal to have them uh, at least have a, a meeting where they can share their concerns, and uh, that would just be beneficial because I'm getting a lot of feedback from the Nice residents who are uh, part of the western region town hall. So if there's projects like this, let's see if we can get that forward. I can help with that uh, communication, but just get it in front of them at least. Uh, that way they can share. I know that a lot of them could come to this meeting or a meeting as such. However, um, I've got like four people that called and said they couldn't be here, but they expressed how they felt. So I think in the future, we'll just ensure that uh, we, we can conduct something as such so they can share their concerns if that's possible. So thank you for that. Supervisor Sabatier? I just want to answer a question that we received in our email, or at least I received in my email. Um, last night. Uh, can you describe the project again one last time, uh, the number of units, the number of units RCHDC will be providing services for, uh, the number of units RCS will be providing uh, or working with, uh, what's left over, uh, the, and how, what behavioral health's um, uh, participation will be. Thank you. I will delegate that response to Scott Abbott, program manager. Um, they're looking at 40 individual units, um, 20 would be dedicated toward behavioral health clients, 10 would be dedicated toward um, the regional center clients, and 10 would be for other low income meeting that qualification. Um, and the 20 would be property managed by RCHDC or right. they will be property managing the entirety of the property? Oh, they'll be ma property managing the entire property. Um, we. Behavioral Health will continue to be working with 
the behavioral health clients, the, the residents there. That is, a, you know, something that we, we have, have an MOU that was approved in the previously that we would be agreed to do that. We'd also agree to help um, get, get people into the, into the residents that are, that are meant behavioral health. And also, I don't think that this has been stated. Maybe it has, and I apologize. Uh, but with all of the signatures today, the property will be under the uh, trust of RCHDC or the uh, uh, Hollier Avenue, Hollier Avenue mm -hmm. Partners. Uh, so it is no longer uh, the county's. That's correct. And I would add that there is. Is that incorrect? It's never been the county's. Sorry, no longer the uh, uh, advisory board, uh, the oversight board, um, or the housing authority. Commission. It's always been owned by RCHDC. Oh, so that occurred in the past when the first uh, loans occurred. Back, it, it started in two thousand two. Okay. They've always owned the property. There's okay. just been liens placed on it. Okay. I'm glad I asked. I did not have that correct. Thank you, um, CEO Parker. I would just like to add also, there is one unit that is dedicated towards the on-site property manager. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Yeah, on standby, Anita. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Move that the Lake County Housing Commission approve the PLHA loan agreement, the PLHA deed of trust, the PLHA promissory note, the PLHA regulatory agreement, the MHSA HHAP loan agreement, the MHSA HAP deed of trust, the MHSA HHAP promissory note, the Chase County subordination agreement, the county sponsor subordination agreement, the county DDS subordination agreement for the Collier Avenue housing project, approving concept, the termination and release of agreement to develop affordable housing, subject to oversight by a delegation of a county uh, employees to assure proper execution of all of the above. Upon closing and otherwise perfect. Upon closing, thank you. Put those words in there somewhere, Johanny. That's the motion. Okay, did you? Second did you, you second? Got a second. There we okay. go. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Okay, motion passes. We'll Thank you. Bill units. You. Good job, everyone. Good job. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Can you get your pen out so it's easier for me to Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. You're welcome. Next. We have to wait until two. Yeah. Okay. Next time people will know who you are, we'll have your name tag. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> have a good one, guys. Just keeps the decorum. And maybe we should. Uh, maybe we should introduce who we'll get. Yeah, we should have. Uh, If you don't say anything, it's the, yeah, what it, the majority is? It is, yes. Yeah, so, that's what I thought. Because I had a guy in one of the courts that would never say anything. So I just said, like, I don't know. Okay. It's okay. Or something. That's what it was about. 40, I mean, I don't even know if uh, Robert Shane was in that. Then. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
and um, we have Gavin Wells here to present. Good afternoon, board. Lieutenant Gavin Wells, Deputy <coughs> Director of Emergency Services. Uh, the Sheriff's Office and OES is requesting you hear an extra item. Uh, yesterday afternoon, Sheriff Howe um, declared a local emergency for Lake County after the agenda was posted. So requesting an extra item be considered for ratification of that declaration of emergency. Excuse me, Chair. Yes. Before you take this up, because this, well, this is a special meeting agenda in this while this is a special meeting agenda and this type of item is often taken up, it was, it was added after the posting and on less than 24 hours. So this would be an extra as indicated on the agenda. So you're first going to have to consider taking it up as an extra. Right. Yes. Okay. So um, any questions or comments from the board about taking this up? Public input? Anyone in the chambers or Zoom? On Zoom. Okay, bring it back to the board. Madam Chair, I move to approve this extra item as it was uh, brought to our attention after the posting of the agenda and needs our urgent uh, consideration. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes and um, over to you, Lieutenant. So, like I was saying, yesterday afternoon, Sheriff Howe uh, declared a local emergency for the County of Lake due to the uh, January 2023 atmospheric river event that we've been experiencing since uh, January 4th of this year. Um, requires board ratification of the, uh, of the emergency within seven days of issuance, and we're requesting um, the board ratify it. Okay. Questions? Comments? I just have a quick question. Do we know what the um, process for federal, what the timeline might look like? Did, or did we miss the first uh, possibility? Uh, just kind of checking in. It, at this point, no state or federal financial assistance has been granted. But as far as uh, declared emergencies, I know the state has. The state has, the federal has, a, there's a federal declaration for assistance to counties, which we were included in on the 9th, I believe it was, off the top of my head. Thank you. Okay, any, any other comments or questions? No? Okay. Um, public input in the board chambers or on Zoom? Nothing on Zoom. Okay, we'll bring it back to the board. Madam Chair, I'll offer the resolution. Okay, resolution's been offered. Roll call, please. Supervisor Simon? Yes. Supervisor Sabatier? Aye. Supervisor, oh geez, Crandall? Aye. And Supervisor Green? Aye. And Supervisor Paiska? Yes. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, board. Okay. So we have finished the two items that were agendized for this special meeting, and now our meeting is adjourned. Okay.